Oh, Megan, it is Wednesday. And you really out Megan yourself in today's episode. Um, so we start talking about uh, how uh, it was just confusing. Um, it was kind of the Biden town hall and the Trump letter to Mitch McConnell, um, you know, calling him a traitor and a pig and whatever all he said about um, McConnell, um, and uh, whether or not we should be covering Donald Trump, blah, blah. Sarah gave a great answer, was thoughtful about, you know, we don't have to cover everything that he says. We can be more selective about uh, what we choose to talk about. You, I don't know, you gave some sort of bullshit answer about bl it blabbing on about, you know, his importance in the party. Again, not taking any, um, uh, responsibility or onus upon yourself to, uh, you know, drive a narrative about what the party should be doing. Um, but then you, you know, and this is the theme of today, uh, Megan makes it about her. And you say, well, I was at the White House Correspondents' Dinner when um, Obama attacked uh, Donald Trump. And that's when Donald Trump decided to run for president being vindictive. Okay. Nobody cares that you were in the room for that dinner. Um, we all know the legend, and it was Seth Meyers and 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 uh, and Obama that you know, in a whole evening that's about roasts, right? It's all meant to poke fun. They made fun of um, something about Donald Trump, and he couldn't take it like a big baby. Um, so congrats for being in the room for that. But how that has anything to do with anything is beyond me. Um, but thanks for bringing up that little piece of trivia of your history, because it was vital uh, to the story um, or to the topic at hand. So, uh, you know, you make into that one with, I was in the room. Then we move on to um, Andrew Cuomo, Governor Cuomo of New York. Uh, and the scandal involving all of the people that uh, died in nursing homes um, or elderly people from nursing homes that died in hospitals and how they were miscounted. Um, and he misrepresented all of that. And he was the one who put their lives in danger. Um, and he, you know, he's trying to skate his way out of that one. Um, and, you know, I'm with you. He, he's not uh, being very transparent. We're not getting a full accountability of what happened. Uh, Tish James, who is the state attorney general, um, has brought some allegations against him. You misidentified her as a city um, uh, attorney general. And again, you can't just stick to the topic and give your opinion because you can't have an opinion unless you have a personal story attached to it. And talking about your friend's parents and how they died and blah, 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 blah. Yes, it sounds awful, but you don't need to have a personal story to have an opinion on something. Um, it's just it's mind boggling. Um, and not only that, do you have to throw in the story of your friend's parents, then you somehow bring in your dad's death and how, you know, he was able to die, uh, uh, you know, with the wolves and the animals. And I, I don't know if you just sent him off into the desert. I don't know what, and I don't need to know. That was your private family moment. We don't need to know about what happened. I don't know why you had to bring that up. Um, but again, because it, you can't have an opinion unless you have a personal story attached to it. Everybody else on the show seems to be do just fine at having um, you know, an analyst point of view. You like to call yourself an analyst. Um, that doesn't involve telling a personal story. I don't know why you insist on doing this. So we got a personal story out of um, whether or not we should be paying attention to Trump. Um, and the answer is, well, selectively, yes, he's a big part of the Republican Party, so he's part of the story, but um, we don't need to know you were at, at correspondence dinner. Uh, Andrew Cuomo does need to be held accountable. We don't need to know how, you, how your father died um, in that process. Um, and then we get to the, the Bachelor scandal um, where Chris Harrison gave an unbelievably disrespectful interview, um, uh, sort of defending a contestant who um, attended um, 
uh, an old South party three years ago. Um, <laughs> and when it comes to race relations, uh, your advice, what you've learned over the last year, um, which is fine, you know, everybody has their time to figure things out. Um, and, you know, it's a constant process. We're all still trying to learn, um, or at least we should be striving to constantly learn. What, what you took away from George Floyd is that <laughs> white people need to listen, which is absolutely correct. White people do need to listen. But to have you, uh, the master non-listener, um, admonish white people uh, that they need to listen uh, is just uh, rich with hypocrisy. Um, you say that's the thing you've learned most this year and what you're taking away. Well, you've got an uphill battle to climb in listening. Um, so I hope, uh, I really hope you're working hard on that, Megan, because we haven't seen a lot of that um, on display yet. So you admonishing white people is, is just priceless. Uh, yeah, and um, no, uh, you know, the morals of the, of the 2018s <laughs> were not that different from the 2021s. Um, it wasn't that much of a different of a lens. Although I did take offense to Sonny continually calling him a 50 year old man who should know better. Um, some people take longer to learn things. Uh, and, you know, you at least claim to be trying, which is, you know, at, at least you've admitted that, that you have growth, room for growth. Um, so we'll start with that. Whether you actually have the capacity for growth is another. Um, so yeah, Megan made every segment about Megan. What a shocker. <laughs>